Hello, welcome to this segment of this lecture. <clears throat> Today we'll be looking at the plasma membrane. Um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Basically, every plant cell has a membrane. And not just plant cells, but also animal cells. And the cell is basically Import, the plasma membrane is basically important for the cell if it must exist, if it must survive, if it must develop. Um, so, in this lecture, we'll be looking at what this plasma membrane is like and why it's important to the plant cell. So first of all, take a look at the diagram. Uh, we have a biolipid layer, a lipid bilayer, a protein layer, a biprotein layer as well. Um, so in between we have um, a space. So this upper part is called the outside of the cell. This side is called the inside of the cell. So let's go to the next slide. Um, as you can see, we have carbohydrate chains. These chains connect to the cell wall, the forming of the cell wall. Okay, cholesterol. We have the alpha helix protein, the inner membrane, the protein, and so on. I'll give you more details about this, but just familiarize yourself with the diagrams. Uh, you can see that. The outside of the cell is where we have the carbon chains, carbohydrate chains, which, as, like I said earlier, connects to the cell wall. And this side, this inside of the cell, have no carbohydrate chains. So we'll go to... Now, all cells are enclosed in a membrane that serves as their outer boundary, separating the cytoplasm from the external environment. Yes. The cytoplasm, which is every living thing within the cell except the nucleus, is separated from the external env environment by virtue of the plasma membrane. This plasma membrane, which is also called plasma lemma, allows the cell to take up and retain certain substances while excluding others. In this aspect, we mean that the membrane is not just a freeway in and out of the cell. The membrane is like a gatekeeper, a gatekeeper which ensures that um, the cell does not just take in everything, does not just allow anything to go, everything inside the cell to any anything to go out or come in into the cell. So it serves like a gatekeeper which allows uh, what is necessary, what is required to come in, and what is not needed to go out. Okay. So, it is considered as the outer living limit of the cell, but not, not necessarily its outer boundary, which implies that after the plasma membrane of a cell, no other thing, any other thing of a particular cell is not alive, is not living. The cell wall is not a living part of the cell. And you know, in the previous lecture, I told you about the protoplasm and the cytoplasm where I differentiated the protoplasm from the cytoplasm by stating that the protoplasm is every living thing within the cell. The cytoplasm is every living thing excluding the, everything within the cell excluding the nucleus. However, I did mention to you that we have protoplasmic uh, materials of the cell, parts of the cell, and we have the non-protoplasmic parts of the cell. The protoplasmic parts of the cell, as the name implies, means they are living parts of the cell, uh, which includes the plasma membrane, the mitochondria, the chloroplasts, the nucleus, and a whole lot of organelles, all right? While the non-protoplasmic parts of the, um, the cell are the cell wall, the vacuole, and um, suspended granules within the cytoplasms, okay? All those things, uh, chemicals, uh, ions, all those things are non-living protoplasmic parts of the cell okay so the out the living limit of the cell is the outer living limit of the cell is the plas the plasma membrane however it is not necessarily the outermost boundary 
of which is the cell wall all right cell membrane is double in nature like i showed you in that picture they have a double layer a double layer you can see it the upper part here and the below part here this is a double layer also this also shows it a double layer all right now it's about 10 armstrong unit thick the membrane has a lipoprotein composition comprised of which means it's a combination of lipid and protein the protein constituent gives the cell wettability and flexibility okay the protein content gives the cell that wettability and flexibility what am i trying to say the protein tends to contract and um, expand all right the protein contracts and expand okay um, <clears throat> the protein constituent of the membrane gives the cell the wettability and flexibility which means since protein molecules which are long and complex can fold or unfold the membrane can expand or contract thus providing through molecular spacing a possible means of control over which molecules can enter the cell from the outside environment or pass to the environment from inside the cell okay so that ability for it to expand allows for something to go inside once it's wet and that once it becomes it begins to contract it limits anything from coming in or going out all right thus the membrane becomes a selectively permeable membrane various transport proteins embedded in the plasma membrane are responsible for this selective traffic of solutes across the membrane all right so the accumulation of ions or molecules in the cytosol through the action of transport proteins consume metabolic energy which means that um, for certain things to move out of the cytosol there must be some uh, energy consumed in moving them out from the inside to the outside okay membranes also then limit the boundaries of the specialized internal organs of the cell and regulate the fluxes of ions and metabolites into and out of these compartments now the metal the there are certain organelles in the cell which include the mitochondria the chloroplast and others now, they also have their own plasma membrane which protects them from the the cytoplasmic environment all right so what's inside the mitochondria does not get easily diluted by the the cytoplasmic content okay and so when the mitochondria wants to release its metabolites or wants to take in certain substances to enable it function it, it, it ought to function there is a selective nature that enables it to take in what it needs and then limits it from taking other thing it doesn't need or letting out what it wants to let out without letting out things that ought not to go out all right this component of a cell being able to regulate what comes in and go out is unnecessary it's essential for the survivability of the cell okay in certain instances the cell might die if anything that is not supposed to be in coming for instance foreign bodies um, pathogens um, ions that are not necessary for the functionality of the organism the cell or protein molecules that ought not to be inside that might end up this denaturing the protein structure of the rna or the dna in the cell so to prevent anything that is that would make the cell not function as it ought to function or survive in the environment it is in it's necessary that it limits what comes in and what goes out all right um, due to the responsibility and contractibility of the membrane and that's how it enables it to take in what it wants and limit what it doesn't want to go out so it gives it that name a selectively permeable membrane now what is the chemical nature of the plasma membrane every living thing has a chemical composition all right the plasma membrane consists of a protein called stromatin which is fibrous in nature and possesses a high molecular weight and possesses a high molecular weight these are glycoproteins and mucoproteins okay um they also contain large amounts of 
arginine, lysine, additionally histidine, triosine, tryptophan, methionine, and many other amino acids. Okay, protein is acidic in nature and forms a greater percentage of plasma membrane as compared to lipid components. The proteins associated with the lipid bilayer are of three types. We have the integral, the peripheral, and the anchored part of the protein. The integral proteins are embedded in the lipid bilayer. Most integral proteins span the entire width of the phospholipid. That means from they are all around it. So one part of the protein interacts with the outside of the cell. Another part interacts with the hydrophobic core of the membrane. And the third part interacts with the interior of the cell, the cytosol. Peripheral proteins are bound to the membrane surface by non-covalent bonds, such as ionic bonds or <gasps> hydrogen bonds, and can be dissociated from the membrane with high salt solutions or chaotropic agents, agents that cause chaos, which break ionic and hydrogen bonds respectively. Anchored proteins are bound to the membrane surface via lipid molecules to which they are covalently attached. So what I'm trying to say is that for the integral proteins, they are embedded in the lipid bilayer. Okay, they can span the entire width of the phospholipid. So there is one part that interacts with the outside, another part that interacts with the hydrophobic core, another part that interacts with the internal part of the membrane. The peripheral proteins Peripheral, as the word implies, periphery, okay, on the surface. It's bounded on the surface of the membrane, okay? While the anchored ones are more like they are anchored to the membrane surface via lipid molecules. They are not actually attached directly to the surface, but they are attached to the surface via lipid molecules to which they are covalently attached. That means they have a covalent bond structure towards with the lipid molecules. The lipids comprises of phospholipids, and cholesterols. Phospholipid mainly consists of lecithin and cephalin. The membrane and on an average possesses 75 to 90 molecules for every molecule of protein. So for every molecule of protein that the membrane contains, there is 75 to 90 molecules of phospholipids. Okay? So the phospholipid molecules that are made up of glycerol are water soluble, whereas the fatty acid molecules that constitute the tail of the whole structure are water insoluble. Now let's get it clear. The phospholipids that are made up of glycerol are water soluble. Whereas the fatty acid molecules that constitute the tail of the whole structure are water insoluble. Okay? So let's get that correct. I will show you, I will go back to the diagram. I will point out to you the proteinous part of the membrane and the uh, phospholipid part of the membrane. Okay? So according to Papat, and Ballantine, the structure of the plasma membrane is different in different cells. Okay, despite the, the composition being similar, the structure differs from different cells. <clears throat> okay, so the plus the structure of the membrane of the cell at the mitochondria, uh, name rather, the cell at the meristematic region is different from those at the leaf organ region or the stem organ regions or the uh, root tissue regions okay so they differ they, they differ the cells they differ the plasma membrane structure now let's look at this diagram it gives us a full view of what the membrane looks like okay so right now we have the protein i told you we have three forms of protein the integral poach protein and the periphery protein. The integral protein is connected from the entire span of the membrane. So we have the outer parts of it, we have the inside part where is the hydrophobic region, and then to the internal part of the cell, the cytosol. We have the periphery just it's attached to the surface of the plasma membrane. Okay, we also have carbohydrate chains that are connected to uh, the surface here, which I've told you earlier on, okay? So, um, the phospholipid bilayer. This is a phospholipid bilayer. This region is the hydrophilic region, which is made up of glycerol, okay? This region here is made up of glycerol. While 
this part this chain part which is made up of the fatty acid is the hydrophobic region so we remember what we talked about when what it means by hydrophilic and hydrophobic hydrophilic region are the areas that can get wet they attract water they are loving of water the hydrophobic regions do not get wet no matter the amount of water you pour on them they don't get wet so water does not get it doesn't get wet here so why water could get passed through they have uh, this point it just moves it slides through so this cannot absorb the water that passes through here the water will just glide through and then pass through this one into the cell or pass through here absorbed by this glide through get absorbed by this and then drains out through the action of osmosis i will get, we'll get to talk more about that so this is how the plasma membrane is extracted from the cell wall the cell wall is peeled off and then we have the plasma membrane which is now being viewed microscopically we enlarged for you to see this part so um take note of this um, chemical structure try and learn how to um, practicalize them and understand the structure the areas where we have the double bonds the areas where we have the single bond so try and understand them okay you might be asked questions on them in your assessment okay the what are the functions of the plasma membrane this they have an osmotic function which is osmosis a semi permeable for differentially permeable membrane because water moves through it more easily than large molecules smaller particles like water move easily through while large molecules like protein find it difficult normally the molecules of dissolved for active transport normally the molecules of dissolved materials diffuse through the membrane from region of higher concentration but sometimes they move towards a region of higher concentration no sorry they move normally molecules of dissolved materials diffuse through the membrane from region of higher concentration to a lower concentration let me get that correct okay but sometimes they move towards a region of higher concentration that means they move from a lower concentration to a region of higher concentration for this energy is needed to move the molecules in direction opposite to that in which they would move by diffusion okay so what that simply means is that um uh, the flow of water is from region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Every molecule moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. However, there are certain molecules that have to be moved from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher, I mean, yes, to a higher concentration. And in doing that, such molecules will require energy. And that kind of movement is called the active transport. Now, <clears throat> The movement of molecule of a substance against a concentration gradient and or against an electrochemical is called active transport. Okay? All right. So in this instance, the molecule does not move by itself, but it's transported through the cell membrane. Okay? Hello. It's transported through the cell membrane by certain organisms which enables it to move from a region of lower concentration the region of higher concentration so this is what the plasma membrane actually does this is what it serves this is what it helps the plant cell to do for the plant cell to survive the plasma membrane is highly essential and for this you have a clear understanding why it's important that the plasma membrane be discussed in this uh, lecture thank you for your time i hope we get to meet you get to study go through these videos carefully and understand the content and then you get to go to the next video which will be uploaded subsequently thank you and have a nice time